So welcome to Chinta School of Statistics and Data Science. Today we are going to solve this problem from IIT Jam MS from the year 2021. The problem is on your screen and it states that let E1, E2, E3 and E4 be four independent events such that their probabilities are given. Let P be the probability that at most two events among E1, E2, E3 and E4 occur. Then 240, that means 240 times P is equal to, we are asked to find the value of 240P, right? So how are you going to approach this problem? Well, it's easy, it's not that difficult. It's given that the events are independent. Here, the term independent actually means not just independent, it's completely independent, right? So what does completely independent means? It means this following thing, this concept, the collection of events, a1, A2 up to An is said to be independent if for any finite subcollection of events, Ai1, Ai2 up to Aik, we have probability of their intersection. The intersections, the probability of the intersection is equal to the product of the individual probabilities. That's it. That means you take any k distinct events from this collection of n events, and the probability of the intersection is equals to the product of the individual probabilities. If this holds true for any k events, any distinct k events, then we say that the collection is independent. Now, here we have four events, right? E1, E2, E3, and E4. So the following inequalities should hold true, right? Any two events, for any two events, like EI and EJ, the probability of EI intersection EJ is P of EI, P of EI times P of EJ. For all i not equals to j, it just states that for any two distinct events. Again, for any three distinct events, it also should hold true, right? For any three distinct events. Again, for all the events, that means we only have four events. So for all the events, the probability of the intersection is equals to the in the product of their individual probabilities, right? Yeah. So these following you know equalities, these following conditions should hold true for independence. How many Equalities, how many of these conditions are there? Well, if we have n events, then we have 2 to the n minus n minus 1 conditions. Here we have 4 events, so 2 to the 4 minus 4 minus 1. Now, it's given that P is equal to probability of at most 2 events among E1, E2, E3, and E4, right? It's given. P is stated to be this. Now, we can do one thing. To just ease our calculation a bit, we can just take the complement of this event, right? One minus probability of the complement of this event. Now, what's the complement? It's at most two events occur, but the complement of this, it's at least three events out of them occurs, right? What is the negation of at most two? It's at least three. So at least three can be further decomposed into exactly three plus exactly four, right? It can be decomposed into these two probabilities. Now probability of exactly three of them occurs is how many in how many ways can we state this particular event it's nothing but suppose e1 e2 e3 and occur and e4 doesn't occur or e1 e2 and e4 occur but e3 doesn't occur and in the fourth in the third and fourth term we have e2 doesn't occur and e1 doesn't occur in these four following ways can we write the event exactly three of them occurs right in each of the term exactly one of them does not occur that means right this is nothing but this can be decomposed into probability of E1 into probability of E2, probability of E3 into probability of E4 complement. See, if E1 and E2 are independent, then E1 and E2 complement or E1 complement and E2 or E1 complement and E2 complement are all independent. We know that. So this particular sum can be decomposed here. This one can be decomposed here. And this and this fourth terms can be decomposed like this. Now, you just know the probabilities from the question. It's given P of E1, P of E2, P of E3, and P of E4. And the complements are nothing but the 1 minus the original events. So after writing down those probabilities, we have it's 1 by 12. So now the answer is still not in our hands. We still have to do a bit more, right? We have only calculated probability of exactly three of them. Occurs. Now, what's exactly four of them? Well, we only have four of them. so. Exactly four of them is basically all of them occurring. 
the p of e1 intersection p of e2 i have i haven't explicitly written the intersection the symbol because it's cleaner to write that way it's cleaner to write that and many a books follow this tradition actually to make it a more, bit more cleaner it, here i have written e1 e2 e3 e4 just to you know do you know that e1 intersection e2 intersection e3 intersection e4 is there you know just like the product of so individual probability splits again into individual probabilities and we have 120 now remember p is actually what one minus probability of exactly three plus probability of exactly four right so we individually have calculated these two probabilities so p is nothing but one minus one by 12 plus one by 120 which is nothing but 1009 by 120. Now we want 240p, right? So we have just multiplied two times both the numerator and the denominator, and we have p equals 218 by 240, and that's it. We have our answer. It's easy, right? It's not that difficult. The only thing we needed for this problem is the idea, the concept of independence, which I have stated just now in this slide, in this particular slide. Remember, this is different from pairwise independence. Pairwise independence only occurs for this, this particular condition. If for any two, for any two distinct events, this occurs from a collection of events, then we can say that the events, the collection is pairwise independent. But we have used the idea of completely independent. It's further inequality, further conditions also hold true, not just for this, these two. It for any two or any three or any four or any k events, it should hold true. And remember this idea that complete independence implies pairwise independence, but not necessarily the other way around. You know, for complete independence, we have for any two, for any three, and for any k events. So obviously, it holds true if completely independent. If a collection is completely independent, then it's obviously pairwise independent, right? But not necessarily the other way around. So remember that. So there you have it, the solution of this problem. Hope you like it. Till then. See you.